The goal of this course is to provide training that complies with the current industry standards and presents the information outlined for the Competent Climber Certification. Industry standards regarding competent climbers state that climbers shall be evaluated once a year and have updated training every two years to stay current with new regulations, equipment, and work hazards. This course is intended for climbers who have been through an industry-recognized fall protection course and have received a certificate stating they have earned competent climber status and who climb regularly. This course is a refresher course and will cover new regulations, equipment, equipment use, and inspection. This course will allow competent climbers to keep their certification in good standing. At the completion of this course, it is an employer's responsibility to evaluate the climber to ensure they have the climbing skills to match their certifications. This course follows the NATE CTS CTP outline for competent climber training. When developing a fall protection plan for any work site, you should go through a hazard assessment process. One method to use is called the REC method. REC means recognize, evaluate, and control. The goal of the first step, or recognize, is to determine what is a fall hazard. As we will learn in this course, a fall hazard exists whenever our feet are six feet or more above a lower surface. In order to evaluate the fall hazard, we must understand the different types of environments we are exposed to and determine the severity of the hazard. This allows you to decide on the best option for controlling the hazard. Lastly, control. This is the key. Control means how you will either prevent the fall from occurring or protect against the effects of the fall. Based on regulations and standards, the maximum force allowed on a human body during a fall is 1,800 pounds. The purpose of a harness is to distribute the forces of a fall proportionately throughout the thighs, pelvis, waist, and upper body. It is very important that a harness be adjusted properly to ensure the forces are evenly spread and localized to specific areas of the body that are more able to handle the force. Failure to wear a harness correctly can result in severe injury under normal fall conditions. Some of the features of the harness include the sternal D-ring, which can be used for rescue or attaching to a fixed safety climb system on a ladder. Leg straps, which should be worn high on the thigh and not sagging down towards your knees. Slack in the leg straps actually makes it more difficult to climb and won't help distribute forces of a fall. The belt on this harness is for tools and positioning and is not part of the primary fall protection system. The waist D-rings are used for attaching a positioning belt and the upper body adjustment should be used to ensure your harness has a snug but comfortable fit. The last part of the job hazard analysis is the rescue plan. The regulations state that the employer shall provide for prompt rescue of employees in the event of a fall or shall assure that employees are able to rescue themselves. There shall be a documented plan describing the rescue process for each specific work site. The plan may call for self-rescue or for the use of outside services. The second part of the form, shown here, includes a checklist of items to assist you in developing your plan, and those items include boxes that determine the type of structure, the type of rescue system to be used, and these general items, emergency data sheet, job hazard analysis, first aid individuals on site, appropriate rescue individual on site, and applicable rescue equipment on site. If outside services are to be used, there must still be a documented rescue plan that outlines what outside services are to be called in the case of an emergency. Prior to work commencing, the service provider that is outlined in the plan must be contacted to ensure that they have the necessary equipment and trained personnel to meet your rescue needs. Some examples of people who you might use to provide outside services include High Angle Rescue Teams, the local fire and police departments, and emergency medical services.